So earlier this year, I had the opportunity to drive both the M4 Coupe and the M440i Grand Coupe. And in both of those videos, I said that the 4 Series is probably my favorite series of BMW right now. With its overall size, power, and driving, it's definitely what attracts me the most from BMW. And after driving that Grand Coupe, is definitely the best all-around BMW for day-to-day -day living that I've ever driven. So before we get into all of that, let's quickly talk about the trims offered in the i4. So the i4 comes in two flavors. You have the i4 E-Drive 40, which is kind of the base trim. And then you have the i4 M50, which is what we're driving here and is the more sporty version. And basically the difference between them is the E-Drive 40 has one single motor mounted in the rear and the M50 is a dual motor all wheel drive. So starting off with the exterior, we have the paint color, which is a very popular color. It's frozen Portimo blue metallic. We have the M carbon exterior package, the shadow line exterior trim. All that obviously adds some carbon fiber and some shadow line, the dark gray metallic uh, trimming around the exterior. We have the Icon Adaptive LED headlights with laser lights. We're rocking 20 inch M bicolor gunmetal gray wheels. These tires are high performance non run flat tires for extra range. And we do have the M Sport brakes with blue calipers. Dimensions of this vehicle include a length of 188.5 inches, a wheelbase of 112.4 inches, a width of 72.9 inches, a height of 81.6 inches, and a total ground clearance of 4.9 inches. Looking at the hatch here, we do have a full 10 cubic feet of cargo volume. It feels like it's more than 10 cubic feet, but that's the number. You obviously do have a little bit taller of a floor for your cargo area because of the batteries and the motors back here. And as you can see here, we do have an AC and DC charging. One of the cool features with this that you don't get with a lot of electric vehicles is that once you lock the vehicle, that charger is locked in. Definitely a good option there. Again, you can get a dual motor or single motor setup. The E40 drive has a single motor rear wheel drive pushing 355 horsepower, 317 pound feet of torque. The M50 is all wheel drive, so it's got the dual motor and you're looking at 536 total horsepower, 586 pound feet of torque and a 0 60 of 3.7 seconds, which we'll definitely test out. The E drive 40 gets 301 miles of range while the M50 gets 270 miles of range. And that is from an 81 kilowatt hour battery. You can obviously also plug it in using a 240 volt outlet with the standard flexible fast charger or the available BMW wall box. The M, the i4 can range from zero. The i4 can charge from zero to 100% in less than nine hours. If you do have access to a fast charger, you're looking at 108 miles of range in 10 minutes of charging. That's on the E-Drive 40. The M50 gets you 88 miles of range in 10 minutes. And of course you can plug it into a wall outlet and uh, charge it slowly. That's mostly what I've been doing as I've had this thing and it is a slow trickle. We did plug it in overnight a couple of times at least eight hours of charging and we're looking at about 10 percent range while doing that so if you're buying one of these you're definitely going to want to get one of the 240 volt uh, outlets or that bmw wall box or at least have access to one of the fast chargers around your area but all that said the range and the charging are all pretty standard across the market for electric vehicles what's going to really set this apart is the interior and the way that it drives. So let's jump in and start talking about that interior. All right, guys, we're inside of the i4 M50 and uh, it is a really nice place to be. We do have these nice basketball kind of leather 
perforated seats. They are heated seats. We have carbon fiber trimming, lots of nice stuff. Let me uh, show you guys around. All right, first off, we do have this really nice one piece curved glass display. It is actually two different displays. You have a 12.3 inch information display and your 14.9 inch control display. And this is running BMW's newest iDrive 8. So you get this whole card set up where you can jump into a lot of different information about the car. You do have a lot more apps over here, including a charging section. A lot of really cool stuff there. You do have your iDrive controller, just like any other BMW here. So you can uh, control your screen with the twist of a knob here, some quick buttons down here. You do also get Apple CarPlay and Android Auto connectivity. Although it is the wireless Apple CarPlay, you can't just plug in with USB and have it work, which is a little bit annoying. But you do have a wireless charging pad down here, so you can just throw your phone down and uh, let it start wirelessly charging. You have USB hookups down here by the cup holders as well as in the console. Console is nice and cushiony, feels good. We do have that push button start in blue, which looks really nice. The electronic gear shifter in blue and a gloss black. And of course you can push it up for reverse, which is gonna give you your full 360 camera as well as a rear view camera with sensors. Push it all the way back for drive over for regenerative braking, push in for park. We've got electronic parking brake. Our traction control button is up here. We also have a quick button for our cameras, for our parking sensors. And below the start stop button is our drive modes. So you have a sport mode, comfort mode, and an eco pro mode. We'll talk more about that sport mode and the sport boost as we drive this thing, but uh, it's a pretty good feature for this BMW. Comfort mode is what I've been driving it pretty much all week. And then the Eco Pro makes it uh, even more economical with deadening the throttle, limiting the AC power, things like that. Moving on to our leather wrap steering wheel. It is a heated steering wheel. You do have all your controls here on the steering wheel. Controls for your cruise control, controls for your infotainment and information screens. Nothing too out of the ordinary there. Nice, thick BMW steering wheel. Really nice in the hands, really responsive. That driver information display does have a lot of different stuff and as you change your mode, will change along with it. You can change the layout. We also have a nice large head-up display. They can also be adjusted to show different information. Really nice overall system there. And I've already talked about it, but the overall size of this thing, I think is just about perfect for me. I'm 6'1", a little bit bigger of a guy. I fit just fine in the driver's seat. I fit fine in the rear seats as well. We've uh, taken this out with the kids, had them three wide in the back and me and the wife in the front. It's not the uh, best thing, but they could manage. You do have a tunnel going through here that does obstruct the middle seats uh, foot room, but uh, in a pinch, not that big of a deal. We do have a sunroof and some other features that I'm sure I'll miss a little bit on because there's so much in this vehicle, but uh, I'm eager and ready to get this thing out on the road and take it for a drive. I'm sure you guys want to see that as well. So uh, let's buckle up and get out on the road. All right, so let's go ahead and get out on the road. <laughs> and uh, first thing, obviously, super quiet of a vehicle. And as you might imagine, super quick, super responsive. <laughs> it's always so hard to uh, see this on the video, but this thing just gets up and goes. Super responsive. That instant torque just puts you back in your seat. So much fun. But now, after driving this thing, <laughs> whoo, all right, let's try a bit of a zero to 60, see how we can get going. Come to a dead stop here, put it into sport mode with that sport boost. Ready, 
set, go. Holy crap. 60. <laughs> Oh, so when it's on that sport boost, you get that instant torque, the maximum horsepower you can get, and an M specific soundscape. So you can hear that. <laughs> Golly, it's, it's a bit ridiculous. And then you can put it into <laughs> the Eco Pro or Comfort, it all quietens down. Way less responsive in the Eco Pro. <laughs> But uh, it's not ripping your face off every two seconds either. Oh, man. This does have near-perfect 50-50 weight distribution, and everything is super low as far as weight goes because of that battery pack being low. So you do get really good handling, and BMW is already the handling king. So no doubt this thing is going to handle well. Even if it does way more than the gas-powered vehicle, <laughs> the handling is not suffered at all because of it. You do have the regenerative braking and adjustable regenerative braking, so you can go into the menu system and adjust how powerful that is, which is good because sometimes the uh, most powerful is not ideal for everyday driving. You can also just put it over into the B mode which gives you the regenerative braking automatically and it is the uh, most powerful regenerative braking. And uh, it's pretty powerful. It will come to a complete stop just using the system. Uh, and of course, like any of the other systems, if you get used to it, you can definitely control that and really drive almost one pedal. I don't really like the regenerative braking that much just because, especially if you get up on the highway I fidget a lot, so if I take my foot off the gas, if I get an itch or something like that, and you basically slam on your brakes, that's just asking for trouble. But I know a lot of people swear by it and love it because you will get your best efficiency using it because it's always putting power back into your battery. Just ends up being a preference thing at the end of the day. We do, of course, have a lot of safety features. We've got all the radars on it. You've got all the 360 camera. We do have lane keeping assist, radar guided cruise control. So you can get up on the highway and lock this thing in and uh, it'll keep you in the lanes. It'll keep you behind whoever you're in front of. Really great system, works really well. Ever since I drove with it on the uh, X5, I've always touted BMW as having one of the better systems out there for the lane keeping assist and cruise control. Obviously it's not Tesla level, but pretty much nothing else in the game is, but it is one of the best outside of Tesla. As far as living with this vehicle day to day, again, it's very ergonomic, super comfortable, beautiful driving car, as you might expect from BMW. This nice curved glass display is really nice, really easy to interface with. My biggest issue is with Apple CarPlay, which probably isn't exactly BMW's fault but it does have the wireless Apple CarPlay only. So you can hook it up with your charger, but that's not really interfacing with the uh, infotainment system. You do have to pair it wirelessly. And that works if you're the only person that ever uses the vehicle. But if you swap between drivers or even have a uh, passengers that get in that want to play their music instead of yours, although it can be done, it's, more clunky than it needs to be. And that's not just my experience with this car, that's with the vehicle that I own, that's with other vehicles that I've driven, non-BMW uh, that we've reviewed. So again, probably an Apple issue, not really the, uh, not really BMW's issue, but uh, that's really the only thing that annoyed me through the whole week with this vehicle. I think one of my favorite things about the i4 is that you don't have to get an i8, you don't have to get a car that looks like the i3. To get a fully electric car, that is fantastic. This thing looks like a 4 Series Grand Coupe for the most part. It drives like a 4 Series Coupe for the most part. It's just a fantastic car that happens to be all electric, which for me gets a huge thumbs up. 
And with that, let's go ahead and find a place to pull back over. We'll talk about the price of this thing, and then I'll give you some of my final thoughts and we'll wrap the video up. All right, before we wrap this up, let's quickly talk about the price, and then I'll give you some of my final thoughts on the i4. So the base i4 E-Drive 40 has a starting MSRP of $55,900. And of course, like all other EVs, basically you can get up to a $7,500 tax credit. The i4 M50, which we're in, has a starting MSRP at $71,300. But our vehicle, with all the options that we have, has a total MSRP of $82,820. So eighty-two grand for a uh, 4 Series, probably a lot, but it is all electric, and it is a quick vehicle. You can really compare this with some of the top of the line of uh, electric vehicles and top of the line of BMWs. And when you start looking at the price of some of those top of the line electric vehicles, it makes a little bit more sense there. But let me jump out. I'll give you some of my final thoughts here and we'll wrap up the video there. All right, and at the end of the week, if I haven't already expressed it enough, I really like the i4. I still think the 4 Series is probably one of my favorite size of BMWs right now. And that Grand Coupe in the 4 Series is my favorite all around day-to-day -day driving size and look. So if it comes down to an i4 versus uh, M440i or the gas powered versus the electric powered, personally, I would probably still stick with the gas power, although <laughs> this thing is insane. But at $81,000, it's a bit up there. Of course, if I had the home infrastructure and I had the money to pay for it, I would definitely take the M50. It would have to be kind of a second vehicle for the family, obviously, because for one, it's not big enough for my whole family. But uh, two, if we do any kind of long trips or just driving to the other side of Dallas, you're really pushing the mileage limit on this thing. But if you lived in the city and mostly stayed in the city, you could definitely pull it off. I think it's a fantastic vehicle. One of the best electric vehicles I've driven lately, but I am a bit of a BMW fanboy, so take that for what you will. With that, if you haven't seen any of our other videos on uh, electric vehicles, we've got a lot of them out now, so definitely uh, go check them out. I'll leave a playlist uh, in the iCars or something so you can check out all of our EV centric videos and we've got a lot more to come including some really cool stuff which i won't uh, spoil here so definitely subscribe to the channel if you're not already and you're into automotive reviews especially ev cars hit the thumbs up if you enjoyed this video leave me a comment down below let me know if i forgot anything or if you had any other questions also go check out txgarage.com where you can find a lot more written reviews as well as event and news coverage from a lot of great authors over there We've got a weekly newsletter if you want to subscribe to that so you don't have to follow us on any of the social medias or YouTube. But with that, guys, all I got left to say is thanks for watching.